Ms. Demings. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman and Director Ray. It's good to see you again. I also want to thank you for uh, protecting the American people and upholding the Constitution. As you well know, what happened on January 6th was shameful, it was disgraceful. And I do believe that as a nation, we failed law enforcement, we failed the American people, we failed the members of Congress, uh, even those who scrambled on that day uh, for their lives to exit the House floor, but now talk as if it wasn't that big of a deal. I also believe we failed the Vice President and his staff, and we failed Congressional staff. Director Ray, you said you were just as outraged about what happened, uh, but you said the report from the Norfolk uh, FBI office um, was online chatter that it was raw, unverified information. But you passed it on and you made that quite clear several times today to the Capitol Police. Um, Director Ray, as you know, and, and I certainly do too, the FBI is viewed as a premier, the premier law enforcement agency and other federal, state, and local agencies look to you and I think uh, rightly so. But it appears to me uh, the FBI dismissed uh, the information. It did not seem there was a sense of urgency. You simply passed it on. And if you did more than that, then I want to hear you talk about that. Um, but let's talk about that information and what resulted. Officer Fanone was dragged and severely beaten. Officers sustained concussions. One officer lost the tip of his finger. Officers were beaten with baseball bats, poles, and pipes, and two officers committed suicide. I guess that online chatter and unverified raw information was credible after all. Director Ray, there was a failure on that day and I would like to hear from you what role the FBI played in that failure. Well, Congresswoman, happy to take the question. So uh, I think the most important thing I would say is that we did not dismiss the information uh, in the Norfolk SIR, the Norfolk Situational Information Report. In fact, quite the contrary. Uh, often when we get online chatter or raw information, uh, we take time, which would be our preference, to run it to ground and figure out whether or not it's real or not. Uh, because as you could imagine, there's all kinds of chatter out there, and some of it, uh, Ray, uh, let me was, just. This one was real, it was and, real. And, yes, and in this instance, rather than dismiss it, we distributed it to the Capitol Police uh, to the MPD, to the other partners on the Washington Field Office Joint Terrorism Task Force. We did it in writing through an email, and as if that wasn't enough, we then made a point of briefing it at the command post briefing that evening, and as if that weren't enough, we put it in the portal so we could make sure that everybody got it, all of which were actions that we took we wouldn't normally take, frankly, with raw, unverified information, but we thought the information was sufficiently concerning that we erred on the side of caution and tried to pass it to the relevant people, not once, not twice, but three different ways, all in the span of about 24 hours. So from our perspective, we did try to pass that information. Now, having said all of that, having said all of that, I don't want to leave you or any other member of this committee with the impression that we think that what happened on January 6th is okay. I'm not the kind of guy, and I think you and I know each other well enough to I know that I'm not, I don't use words like outrage lightly like the FBI did everything within your power to properly note it, because you didn't dismiss it, so you passed it on, there had to be some concern. Do you feel that you did everything within your power to adequately and properly notify law enforcement so that they would be adequately and properly prepared to deal with all hell breaking loose at the U.S. Capitol? So Anytime there is a successful attack, much less an attack of the kind of scale and significance that occurred on January 6th, 
you can be absolutely sure that we are asking what else we can do, what we can do better, what we can do more of, what we can do differently in terms of collecting information, analyzing it, and disseminating. Uh, I'm not aware of information that we didn't share that we should have. I am concerned that we need to get better and better at uh, developing human sources to be able to anticipate acts like this in the future. And so that's one of the things that we're looking at, but we're going to be looking at a whole slew of things because our goal is to bat a thousand, and we do not consider what happened to be what happened on January 6th to be remotely acceptable. And we're determined to do our part with all of our partners to make sure it never happens again. Gentlelady's time has expired. I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there, and the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think. I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th, was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And, I, and I'm, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C., there is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media.
when you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.